finally in court, but relatively little progress in the case of Cecily Aguilar, the woman accused of helping cover up Vanessa Guillen's murder. Tonight, we've got the latest. Plus, are a slew of state bills targeting transgender youth? Tonight, we're breaking down the effort in Austin to shape what happens with LGBTQ youth across the state. And it's springtime, it's late April, but hey, let's get into the 30s tonight here across the area. Some folks may see a little bit of frost. It won't last forever though, as we're talking thunderstorm chances by the end of the week. Your 25 News starts right now. Connecting Central Texas, this is 25 News. I feel that all the emotions come like years later, months later. Those words coming from the family of Vanessa Guillen as the woman accused of helping cover up her murder finally appears in court. But very little information was given in court today on the possible trial of Cecily Aguilar. 25 News reporter Sierra Shipley was at that hearing and she has more new tonight. Nearly a year has passed and still there is no trial set for Cecily Aguilar, the suspect in the death of Fort Hood specialist Vanessa Guillen. After the court hearing was pushed back four times, the hearing finally completed Tuesday at the U.S. District Court in Waco. Both the defendant and prosecutor said they need more time, urging the court to leave the case as a complex designation as they still work through the discovery phase. This means there's still evidence both sides are collecting and examining. In a recent interview with 20 25 News sister to specialist Vanessa Guillen, Lupe Guillen, says it's time for answers. To hold those accountable and to know what happened to my sister, what was the motive, and if they're actually investigating what's going on at Fort Hood. Thursday marks the year anniversary of specialist Guillen's death, and Lupe Guillen says hearts are still hurting. I feel that all the emotions come like years later, months later. Like right now, I feel that everything is just, now I can comprehend everything that happened. Because at that moment, you know, we're just, we were just trying to find her. We were just trying to get answers. The family will continue to search for answers as a trial date has yet to be set for suspect Cecily Aguilar. In court Tuesday, no date was set for an upcoming hearing or trial. In Waco, Sierra Shipley, 25 News. Let's take a brief timeline review of this case. On April 22nd of last year, Guillen was seen for the final time on post. The next day, Army investigators are notified she is missing. Two months later, on June 30th, her remains are found not far from post. Officials deduce that another Fort Hood soldier, Aaron Robinson, killed her. Cecily's girlfriend is accused of helping dispose of the body. Robinson later took his own life. Several Texas legislatures and the family holding a press conference today to unveil a number of bills in honor of Specialist Vanessa Guillen. Our Jarrell Baker tells us how these bills can help protect men and women in the military from sexual assault. The I Am Vanessa Guillen Act passed unanimously in the Texas Senate this week, an outcome the Guillen family and state lawmakers call a huge victory. It is our duty to make sure that we protect all those who follow. What happened to Specialist Guillen and her family must never happen again. The bill aims to protect service members in Texas from sexual assault. It's not something that's new. Uh, it's something that will continue to be a problem uh, until we prioritize the safety of the victims. The legislation would also require a third party independent investigation into sex related offenses and a confidential recording option for sexual harassment, which allows a formal complaint to be filed at any time. Let us never forget who she was, what she stood for, and her courageous example of thousands of others enlisted soldiers. State lawmakers also passed two bills to rename part of State 3 Highway after Vanessa and to make September 30th, Vanessa Guillen's birthday, a holiday. The Guillen family attorney says if passed by both Texas chambers, the bill will serve as a reminder of Vanessa Guillen's legacy. She's hoping the efforts here will push Congress to pass federal legislation. What we show today is we show true leadership. These legislators stepped up and they did something quickly, correctly, efficiently. And we hope that our congressmen and women will do the same in the U.S. Capitol. Quam says the Guillen bill will be introduced to the state House of Representatives on May 13th. In Bell County, Jarrell Baker, 25 News. 
Jarrell, thank you. Tomorrow, a virtual 5K run for Vanessa Guillen will be held. And on Thursday, the anniversary of her disappearance, Congress will introduce the hashtag I am Vanessa Guillen Act. And a moment of silence will also be held. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is planning to attend and speak in support of the act. Here is a live look tonight at Minneapolis. Hundreds of people gathering at the store where George Floyd first encountered police and ultimately was killed. The community there has set up a memorial to honor George Floyd. After nearly a year of protests, three weeks of testimony, and two days of jury deliberations, former officer Derek Chauvin was found guilty on three counts today. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. America was watching and listening closely as Judge Peter Cahill read the verdict so many have been praying for. We the jury in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin convicted of second degree murder, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter, silent and stoic as he was cuffed and taken back into custody. <laughs> Right outside, though, the cheers echoing loud throughout the streets of a city that's been hurting for nearly a year now. George Floyd's family breathing a sigh of relief. Today, we are able to breathe again. Just because you are a law, you're not above the law. President Biden saying this verdict is a step in the right direction. No one should be above the law. And today's verdict sends that message. But it's not enough. We can't stop here. In order to deliver real change and reform, we can and we must do more to reduce the likelihood that tragedies like this will ever happen and occur again. The jury of seven women and five men, which included six people of color, stayed late Monday night and came in early Tuesday morning. They worked swiftly and didn't send out a single question during their ten and a half hours of deliberations. Are these your verdicts? So say you one, so say you all. Yes. 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 They listened to nearly three weeks of powerful testimony from 45 witnesses and came to the conclusion that Chauvin's actions did, in fact, kill George Floyd. Chauvin will be in custody until he is sentenced in two months. He could get up to four decades behind bars. Floyd's murder sparking nationwide protests across the country, and there were some even here in Texas. Texas DPS were criticized for their use of force during some of those protests. Before this year's legislative session began, the Texas Legislative Black Caucus unveiled the George Floyd Act that would ban chokeholds and limit police use of force in an effort to protect Texans from police brutality. From eyewitness videos to emotional testimony, those watching the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin may have spent weeks on edge. One expert says, there's a potential for depression, frustration, anger, and or fear at the thought of what could happen after a verdict outside the courthouse and beyond. First, you kind of have to stand still and feel and understand the hurt. And then I would say the second best thing to start doing is to process your emotions, your thoughts, your your. Um, whatever it is, frustrations with close family members and friends that you trust. If negative feelings surrounding the trial are consuming you, he says to become involved, find something you're passionate about and volunteer your time. And now let's get a first check of weather this evening with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Matt Hines. Matt, it is starting to get pretty chilly. It is. We'll need the coats in the morning, folks, as frost advisories in effect for the northwestern parts of the area. Now, if you live in the city center and the urban area, probably not going to see a lot of frost. But in the rural areas, especially where you see the blue counties, from course, Canada, Waco, Gatesville, San Sabin to the north, you may see a little patchy frost as we head into the morning hours. And checking out temperatures right now, we are falling. It's already into the 40s across our northern areas. 51 in Waco, 52 in Temple, and 56 in Cameron. This is actually about 2 to 3 degrees degrees above where the models have us so we're actually a little bit warmer than what the models have but still it should start to collapse a little later on tonight because we're still getting that north wind in here that's blowing at 10 to 20 miles per hour so it is quite cool across the region and when we wake up in the morning it should be into the mid to upper 30s across the area we'll call that cold for april standards 
And then as we make our way into the afternoon, not warming up too much, low to mid 60s for us. We'll call for an official high of 63 degrees and we will have a few clouds starting to roll in and that will be a precursor of maybe some thunderstorm chances by Friday. More on that coming up. All right, Matt, thank you. There are a handful of bills being discussed that target the LGBTQ plus community, how the legislation could impact our transgender youth here in Texas and a community coming together to remember two young lives taken too soon. That story up next. A surge of legislation focusing on transgender youth is being debated at the state capitol right now. Tonight, 25 News reporter Paige Ellenberger is looking at the potential mental health impact. According to EqualityTexas.org, there are more than 40 bills under consideration at the state's capital targeting the LGBTQ community. The most recent, passing through the Texas Senate last week, banned students from playing on sports teams based on their gender identity. Now, as more bills are heard, mental health experts at Texas A&M Central Texas worry about the lasting impact the legislation may have. This is a group that is more prone to depression and anxiety, have higher rates of suicide, and so not being able to openly or not feeling like they can openly come out is going to make that even worse. According to youth.org, suicide is the third leading cause of death among 15 to 24 year olds in the LGBTQ community. For more information or resources on the bills, head over to our website at kxxv.com. In Bell County, Paige Ellenberger, 25 News. Well, as Paige referenced, the bill that passed the state Senate last week could require students to prove their biological sex by showing a birth certificate if there's a dispute about their gender. The measure still needs one more vote there before it is sent over to the Texas House. Here in Texas, one in 150 adults identify as transgender. Advocates say more than 10,000 Texas youth identify as transgender. According to a recent study, about 75% of them feel unsafe in school. There are several resources available for mental health support. The Trevor Project has a 24-7 toll-free support line. We've also put the number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline on your screen right there. You can also text 741-741 to text with a trained crisis counselor. Today, What People Call 420 celebrates marijuana and a Texas rep pointing to a bill aimed at legalization. House Bill 4089 would legalize cannabis use, expunge past marijuana convictions, and use the new tax revenue to fund early childhood education. According to the Texas Tribune, 60% of Texans support the full legalization of marijuana. Only 13% say it should be completely illegal. Families and friends gathering at Mart High School's football stadium for a balloon release. Tonight is in remembrance of Sabion Kabitza and Jacob Yabara. People released numerous balloons to the sky for the two men who were fatally shot in Mart early Sunday morning. Former University of Houston football player and Mart High School student Zamar Kirvin was arrested for the shooting and is charged with capital murder. The shooter knew the two victims beforehand. The investigation is still ongoing. One of the two victims killed in a fiery Tesla crash was a doctor. Dr. William Varner and another passenger, as yet to be ID'd, were in a Tesla that smashed into a tree Saturday night outside of Houston. One passenger was in the front seat in the passenger seat, the other in the back seat, meaning the car was under automation control at the time of that wreck. We told you about it last week, a small group of students in North Texas holding a mock slave trade on Snapchat. Last night, parents packed into a school board meeting to sound off. It was standing room only in Alito ISD. The district has launched an investigation, but many, including one of the students targeted in that Snapchat, say it simply is not nearly enough. I'm asking the Board of Trustees and the Superintendent, when will you make the changes needed to ensure all of us feel treated fairly and safe? Many of the kids and parents addressing the board want to see a detailed plan for how Alito ISD will deal with racial issues going forward. Another minor setback for one of the COVID vaccines on the market right now. What the CDC is saying about a very rare but potentially dangerous side effect to the Johnson & Johnson shot.
Well, you can definitely turn the AC off tonight. You may even have to throw the heat on or put an extra blanket on the bed as we're going to be seeing some pretty cool conditions as we make our way into the morning hours. A frost advisory in effect one more time across the northwestern parts of the area and mainly in rural areas. If you live in the city, probably not going to see a lot of frost as temperatures will be in the mid to upper 30s as we head into the morning hours. But I do think we're going to break a record low April 21st tomorrow morning. The record low is 43 degrees from 1910. All we have to do is hit 42. We're already in the upper 40s and low 50s. I think that's a pretty good bet. We're forecasting a low of 36. So any way you slice it, we're probably breaking a 111 year uh, year old record. Easy for me to say, right? As we take a look at our extra co Eagle Eye in Waco, it's still breezy out there. Winds out of the north, 14 miles per hour, gusting up to 20 from time to time. 51 degrees and that dew point sitting at 35. So that number continues to go down. The lower that number goes, the lower that number can go. So we will be watching that throughout the overnight hours. And when you wake up with Josh, probably going to see some 30s and 40s across the map. <clears throat> Cold tonight here across the area as we're going to be seeing those clear skies. Earlier today, there was some snow as far south as about Tulsa, Oklahoma, over into northern Arkansas. That is now moving over into parts of Kentucky and over into Missouri, St. Louis saw snow today, so definitely a pretty chilly system for the month of April. And as we check out what we are anticipating for tonight, not much has changed. Looks like mid to upper 30s out there. I don't think we'll see freezing temperatures across the area. But again, some patchy frost, rural areas, maybe low lying areas in the river valleys. You could see that 36 for Waco, 37 Temple and clean in the morning, 35 Meridian and Hamilton and 36 in Mejia and our normal low this time of year. Look at that 56 degrees. So that's way below normal and our highs will be way below normal tomorrow as well into the upper 50s and lower 60s. And we're supposed to be close to 80 this time of year. So below normal temperatures once again here across the area and we're going to touch more on this as we get later into the week and especially by tomorrow once we get this cool air out of the way but we will have the potential for thunderstorms as we head into our friday and we could see some strong to severe thunderstorms as well model still trying to pinpoint exactly where that's going to happen but in general across the eastern half of Texas, and that's where we reside, so we'll continue to watch that. But for Wednesday, 63 degrees, 67 on Thursday, 20% chance of an isolated shower. Thunderstorm potential there on Friday. We're going to go for a 70% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Still a couple question marks on whether we'll see severe weather, but it is definitely a possibility. So let's watch Friday closely as we get closer. Then as we move into Saturday, I think the rain moves out by about sunrise. Then we're looking at upper 70s Saturday afternoon, 80s as we head into Sunday afternoon and more 80s on the way next week. Maybe an isolated storm on Tuesday. So chilly tonight, storm chances on Friday. Of course, the weather always changes around here. It's never a dull moment. Sure does. Thanks, Matt. Well, this spring, the weather isn't the only thing going to heat up. Americans are ditching planned staycations. TripAdvisor says more than two thirds of us plan to travel for a vacation in late spring into the summer. 74% will stay domestic within the U.S., with at least 13% going overseas or to Canada or Mexico, though. Beach getaways are the most popular, with Florida and Mexico topping the destination list. Here in Texas, just a little more than 1,000 cases of COVID being confirmed today, along with nine new deaths. Overall, there are well over 2.4 million confirmed cases since the beginning of the pandemic. New FDA approved COVID rapid tests are being sent out to pharmacies across the country this week. Store shelves will soon be stocked with Binax Now made by Abbott Labs. The tests will be sold over the counter and will come in two count packs. Results could show up within 15 minutes. Another setback for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. After a new inspection, the FDA is ordering production at a plant in Baltimore, making a key component for that vaccine to stop. Now, this is the same plant where ingredients for up to 15 million doses were ruined last month and forced to be discarded. Use of the J&J vaccine is still on hold as the CDC looks into rare blood clots and a few additional unconfirmed reports. We are um, encouraged that it hasn't been an overwhelming number of cases, but we're looking and seeing what's come in. With the CDC set to review the J&J vaccine on Friday, the European Medicine Agency is moving forward with its rollout there. A poll shows despite the pause of the shot here in the United States, there's been no change in Americans' likelihood to get vaccinated. 
Vaccine advisors to the CDC are expected to recommend the J&J &J vaccine be administered again under restrictions, though. This should be happening on Friday. Researchers think based on a risk benefit analysis, the vaccine should be returned to use in the U.S. Among the medical experts who believe the vaccine will come back after Friday's meeting is Dr. Anthony Fauci. The launch of new Apple products making a big tech statement today. Coming up, a look at the new spring-loaded colors and updates available for all you Apple diehards. In a major step toward creating a more sustainable Texas, HEB is joining the How to Recycle program. As part of the program, HEB will implement a new straightforward labeling system. The clear, easy to read labels let customers know if a product's packaging can be recycled, which parts are recyclable, and most importantly, how to prepare material to increase recycling effectiveness. Taco Bell also says it's working on a recycling pilot program. Now get this, more than 8 billion sauce packets are used every year in the United States alone. Their plan will give the packets, quote, a spicier second life that doesn't involve a landfill. Now they haven't released any specific details about how it will work, but they say its participation will involve free shipping. Next door is rolling out what they call an anti-racism notification. Users will be alerted if they're about to post something that could potentially be offensive. The tool recognizes words or phrases like all lives matter or blue lives matter and gives users the option to edit the post or ignore the warning. Apple's annual product launch did not disappoint today. The updated iPad Pro is faster and now features 5G and a Thunderbolt port so it can connect to external monitors. The updated iMac has Touch ID for the first time and Apple unveiling AirTag, which uses Bluetooth to help you find your items, finally, the new iPhone 12 goes on sale April 30th. Speaking of Apple, if you have an iPhone, there are some changes you'll need to pay attention to. Apple will have users now choose from one of two options, have apps track your activity or stop tracking altogether. This is all through a new update. If you allow apps to track it, your phone will be assigned a random number. That way, advertisers can track you without knowing your personal information. Now let's go ahead and check in one final time tonight with Matt. And the forecast tonight shows chilly conditions out there. Maybe some patchy frost as well, especially across the northern half of the area. Down into the mid to upper 30s we go in the morning. So it is going to be a chilly start and we'll only make it up into the low to mid 60s by the afternoon on Wednesday. Thursday, 67 degrees. An isolated shower will be possible late in the day. Then we get to Friday. That's when we have a chance for thunderstorms. Some of those could be on the strong side, especially by the afternoon and evening hours. So if you have plans, we're going to keep you uh, up to date with that. But the weekend's looking pretty good as the rain moves away and temperatures start to warm back up. All right, Matt, thank you. Jimmy Kimmel is up next. Good morning, Texas. On the air tomorrow at 5 a.m. Thanks for being with us on this Tuesday. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night.